Dear human, I am talking to you as a human. It does not matter whether you're Christian, Jew, Buddhist, or Hindu. It does not matter whether you are a worshiper of idols, atheist, religious, secularist, a man, or a woman. I talk and address you as a human. Have you ever stopped and asked yourself one day the reason why you believe in what you believe in? Have you ever thought about the reason for which you chose the religion you practice? If you are a Christian, have you ever thought why you believe that Jesus Christ is the only way for eternal salvation? Does salvation require the crucifixion of the godly prophet? Does God need to sacrifice himself to redeem others? Do you really believe that your God is not one, and that they are three, such as a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? How come one entity is three entities at the same time? According to what church or point of view? What is the proof to that? Is the Bible really the Word of God? Is all of it the Word of God? Did it remain the same over time without any change like addition or omission? Which apostle of Jesus should his book and life be followed, and why? Did you really ask yourself these questions, or some of them? What is the fate of one who opposes, and why? What is the position of the Christian who follows another church for you? Have you ever asked, what are the only principles through which you can decide which beliefs are right and worthy of following? What are the measures? How to agree regarding them. You who believe in Judaism, have you ever stopped and thought, what are the right foundations of faith and why do you have them in your belief while others do not have them? Why should the center of your faith be to believe that God, Jehovah or Elohim is only for you? Why do you believe in him thinking that he made a sin and that he still cries because of feeling guilty until now? Can the one who cries, regrets, and wails be a god? What is the proof of your faith? Is the Torah agreed upon by all sects of the Jews? Do you even all agree upon the definition of the Jew? Is the promise of God only given to the Jews? Why is that? What is the fate of the other Jewish sects that do not agree with you? Also, what is the fate of other religions for you? You who believe in Hinduism, are you sure that the right and acceptable shape of the cycle of life is reincarnation? Is this acceptable for all the people? What is the fate of those who do not believe in it? Is the emotional feeling the right way to measure faith? Is your holy book void of any addition or omission? You who believe in Buddhism, do you really have the proof that Buddha is the Son of God and the Savior of humanity from all their miseries and pains, that he carries all their sins, and he will be back to relieve the world of all the evils and sins? You who claim that you do not believe in God, who created you? Who made you from nothing? Why are you created? So you are born and then you die and become forgotten? Do you like to live in such state? Every human has to believe in some power to return to regarding the method of his life and to look up to in case of fear and upon death. My brother in humanity, you are so sure of your faith. You know that it is the true religion and anything else is false. All the other religions are wrong. So, you are ready to bet with your immortal spirit on this assumption. Yet... Did you stop to think carefully about the fact that there are more than 24 official religions and hundreds of beliefs practiced on this planet? Do you know that Christianity includes more than 450,000 sects? All of them claim to understand the ultimate truth better than the rest. Do you realize that every member in a practiced belief is a pious and honest person just like you? Do you know that his faith is as firm as your faith? Do you know that they also read the sacred texts with certainty too? Do you know that they have confirmed justifications? They have known miracles beyond their measures and opinions. 
They feel the existence of God and His faint voice. They follow His perfect advice with obedience for their life. They love Him in an indescribable way. They can also defend their belief in the same enthusiasm with which you defend your belief. You contradict with them about both the big and small issues. They cannot all be right. Is that not correct? What are the measures which the rational people agree upon and which they can use to measure the nature of the true religion? Some of these measures are Belief in God The human has to believe in a deity. He can call him God or he can call him anything else. He can be a tree, planet, woman, image, or a singer he is passionate about. So, the human has to believe in something that he would follow and cherish. He would refer to him in his method of life. He might even die for him, and this is what we call worship. As for the true God, he is a creator. He knows the hidden and concealed matters. He is all-knowing of the unseen. He has the power and will, and he makes all things happen according to what he wills. He is wise. He does not do anything except for certain wisdom. He is just, and because of his justice, he rewards and punishes. He has a link with humans. He will not be their Lord if he creates them and then abandons them. This is why he sends messengers to them to clarify the right path for them and to notify humans of his method. The one who follows this method will be worthy of getting the reward and the one who leaves it will be worthy of punishment. There has to be a place for the reward, which is paradise, and a place for punishment, which is the hellfire. If he is not capable of admitting them in either of these places, then he is not a god. The Religion We need an accurate definition of religion, because if it is a method for life and the path to the afterlife, it has to have attributes to consider it as the true religion. 1. It has to be close to the basic nature of humans, which represents all the good qualities and traits in humans. 2. Consistency It has to be a consistent religion for all generations, countries, and all kinds of humans. It has to be a religion that does not increase or decrease according to desires. 3. The beliefs of this religion have to be clear and evident. There should be no visible and invisible matters, and this religion should not be a mediator. The religion should not be taken based on mere spiritualities. It has to have an evident and reliable proof. 4. The religion has to tackle all issues of life at every time. It has to be suitable for life and also the afterlife. It has to build the body, and it should not forget the spirit as well. 5. This religion has to protect the life of the people and their honors. There has to be no unlawful mixing of lineages, and it has to protect their wealth. Islam is in conformity with the creation and nature of humans. There is no contradiction between Islam and the nature of humans, and this is why it is the religion of the natural disposition. Almighty God has created the human and defined the method for him to follow. This method is commensurate with the nature and needs of the human. This method is the religion. Whoever does not follow this religion will be in a state of chaos, instability, and spiritual and psychological discomfort, in addition to the torture in the afterlife. The Islamic religion has clear beliefs. It is not satisfied with establishing the commands and teachings by abstract obligation and strict dictation. Islam does not say like other beliefs, believe blindly, or believe then no, or close your eyes then follow me. Islam does not only address the heart and spirit and depend on them as a foundation for belief, it also explains the matters with evident and convincing reasoning, clear proof, and true justification that persuade the mind and reach the hearts. The Quran is the book of God and his words. It did not change despite the passing of hundreds of years and despite the dissimilarities among countries and civilizations. It is still the same as it was revealed. It is still leading the Muslims in their worldly life and their path to the afterlife.
The Quran establishes proofs about the matter of divinity from the universe, the spirit, the history of the existence of God, his oneness and completeness. It also establishes proofs in terms of resurrection. It proves the potential of creating humans, creating the heavens and the earth, and reviving the land after her death. It shows God's wisdom through justice in rewarding the good doer and punishing the bad doer. The Islamic religion is complete for all matters of life. It is flexible because it is close to the human nature, which God has created humans according to her rulings. There is no Muslim that does not know the signs of the truth. The universe leads him to the oneness of God Almighty. What the messenger, peace be upon him, brought proves his truthfulness and prophethood. The Muslim knows quite well that whoever said that God is the third of three is misleading and astray. Also, who said that God felt tired and rested on Saturday after the creation of the heavens and the earth is a misled disbeliever? The Muslim also sees clearly the disbelief of the idol worshippers and their delusion. The deluded atheists are even worse. The human does not know the truth about his spirit and being. He does not know the future that he will face, and this is why the human being was not able to put permanent legislations and laws to fit every time and place. But the Almighty Creator is the All-Knowing. He is the fully aware of the creation of humans. He is the All-Knowing of what happened in the past, what happens in the present, and what will happen in the future. This is why no human can bring a permanent flexible sharia or legislations that would fit every time and place unless this human is a messenger from his Lord. Is it enough for us that our Islamic sharia has ruled different cultures? In different countries and at different times for hundreds of years. There has been no problem without a solution in this honorable sharia. Now, at our modern time, the time of quick developments and outstanding innovations, this meaning is confirmed clearly. Our Sharia proclaimed herself even more in our time, despite the weakness of her people, because Islam conforms to the requirements and needs. Islam can develop without any decay over the centuries. Islam keeps its complete strength of life and flexibility. Islam is the religion that gave the world the most established and affirm legislations. The Sharia of Islam surpasses any other legislation on the face of the earth. Make these words a starting point. Keep looking. You will arrive through your nature, heart, and mind to God, the perceiver, the initiator, the one and the creator of everything, because you are looking for the religion that would lead and introduce you to Him. Please subscribe to our channel. Kindly like, share, and comment on our videos. If anyone benefits because of your like and share, then God may provide you with unlimited reward which is called Sadaqat al Jariyah in Islam. Sadaqat al Jariyah is continuous rewards received for good actions, deeds, and spreading knowledge. It is a gift that not only benefits us in this life, but also benefits us and our loved ones in the hereafter. According to the Hadith of the Prophet, peace be upon him, narrated by Muslim. When a person dies, all the deeds end except three. A continuing charity, beneficial knowledge, and a child who prays for them.